I looked and I'm not. Famous, iconic radio personality, Jeff Edwards is with us. And you thought you were for a second there, that intro. Yeah, right? cause, yeah, sure. I mean, here I am. You get confused, don't you, Jeff? Yeah, easily. Yeah, that's easily. So do I. Same thing. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, have you seen the show Chicago Fire? No. It's on NBC. It's one of the few programs that people actually watch on NBC. Wow. They used to watch The Tonight Show, but not anymore since they're moving it back to New York. You know, that's such a mistake. I, and First of all, I don't think the new guy coming in is very funny. Uh, I've watched him to see. But to move it to New York, now Letterman and that show are going to be in conflict. Right. Most people, stars, will go on Letterman because it's there and it's, it's situated and it's been on for a long time. Right. So I, I agree with you. First off, Jimmy Fallon is a funny guy, but he's not as good at stand-up as Jay is. He's not as good at interviews. He kind of kisses the butt of the, somebody who's on there all the time. He doesn't really do a really great interview. He does good bits. That's like on Saturday Night Live, those bits. So he will be good at that. To move him earlier and to replace Jay Leno, I don't know if it plays across the Midwest. Saturday Night Live does fine, but that's only one day a week. Jimmy yeah. Fallon... Being there, and so that's number one. They already tried it with Conan O'Brien, and it didn't work. And Conan was funny, and he's talented, and he's a great guy as well. The second thing is what you just mentioned: why take some show that's been for forty plus years in Los Angeles, and successful in beautiful downtown Burbank, and made Burbank what it is, and move it back to New York? Yeah, ridiculous. Uh, and the, uh, you know, I worked in New York, and and the the way they try to get stars first of all a lot of them have to go to new york to be on anything if right. they want to be on letterman now what's what's the letterman group going to do they're going to say you want my show you're not on his it's what they're going to say right and i've noticed that the big stars are being thrown onto the Jimmy Fallon show now and not on Jay Leno's show because they're trying to prime people to see Tom Cruise on Jimmy Fallon uh -huh. and not on Jay Leno. They've really dissed Jay, and everybody says, well, he's not a nice guy. Wait a second. Jay is the nicest guy in show business. Yeah. All he did is what his bosses have said. He's never said anything negative about anybody, Letterman, Conan, anybody. Even Letterman on his show a week ago said, I've known Jay for 38 years, and he was saying nice things about Jay for all all the things you've done and he said to stick around you'll probably be called back again because <laughs> yeah that's right? probably it yeah it's it, it is an embarrassing i don't know it's, it seems to me like lauren michaels who produces saturday night live and the jimmy fallon show late night with jimmy fallon i think he is starting to think he's the producer extraordinaire because he's going to do the show and i think he wants to have the tonight show on his egotistical uh name you know yeah but that, that's the possible show. i think that's it you know jay is is uh he is a good guy, and it's just to me. I, I I like his show. I don't like it as well as Carson. Nobody would like Carson, I don't right. think. But I watched Fallon the other night, and they were playing a game. Uh, I can't remember the game where one guy stands up there and said one word, and it's all. Yeah, improv. he does. He does some kind of funny games, which you couldn't get it, right? No, well, it just wasn't any. Fun. That's the funniest part of the show, by the way. <laughs> the part that you didn't like. Thank you. <laughs> it Jeff wasn't very very funny. Jeff Edwards is with us. It's uh, the PM Show Weekend Edition without Fred Dreyer. Hi folks, this is Fred Dreyer for Regenix. Like so many people today, I was losing my hair. I was literally watching it fall out, jumping right off the top of my head. So I said, that's it, enough. I called Regenix. I still remember that first day I walked through those doors. It was magical. It changed my life. When they introduced me to their patented hair analysis program, I immediately saw why I was losing my hair. Through their microscopic examination, I saw gray, sickly scalp. I had no circulation. The hair follicles themselves were caked and clogged with a dirty, oily sludge. I was so relieved. Finally, there was hope. So now, after six years on the Regenix program, my scalp is pink and clean and my hair is growing back. It makes so much sense. Don't wait. Call Regenix right now. Pick up the phone and put an end to your worries. Start by calling 1-800-REGENIX. That's 1-800-R-E-G-E-N-I-X or go to Regenix.com. It's the PM Show, Weekend Edition, with Fred Dreyer. Fred is away uh, doing an episode of Chicago Fire on uh, NBC. Gonna Fire be with Dreyer. Is that what the episode is called? Yeah, and I'm not a liar. And you, 
fry fire with dryer and you're not a liar no and three months it'll expire and that was written by uh, Jeff Edwards, who's uh, filling in today. <laughs> Fred Dreyer. Oh, dear. What have you been up to, Jeff Edwards? You're one of the uh, the greats. What have you been doing here? Well, I, I uh, live at the beach now, so I don't do anything. You know, it's it's. I wrote on uh, Facebook that I'm coming on the show today because I have to get out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> you were in uh, Southern California. Yeah. And we're in Playa del Rey, is that right? Playa del Rey, right. And you were, had lived there before, loved it, moved into the inland areas where it's warmer and you love the beach more? Is that like your favorite? Oh, I love the beach. I moved into the inland area because we have grandchildren there, and my wife wanted to be closer to them, uh, and now I didn't. So <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So I went so to the your beach. your wife wanted to be closer, but you did not want to be. You love your grandchildren. Yeah, I love them, and I was closer to them long enough. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Time to be away from them. Yeah. Is your wife okay with this move? Yeah, she she goes up and uh, visits them on Tuesdays and, and Thursdays. They have two different sets. Tuesdays and Thursdays. One in Pasadena and one in uh, Valencia. So she visits, and you go with her? No, no, no. I stay with Debbie. Who's Debbie? I don't know, but I wish. <laughs> That's good, Jeff. You was, you're looking for a Debbie. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. Okay, good, Jeff. Jeff, you uh, have been on uh, quiz shows. You are like one of the premier quiz masters of our time. How many different quiz uh, programs did you host? Boy, I don't know. Uh, probably about five that yeah. got on the air and, and maybe 10 pilots or yeah, more. Yeah, 10 pilots. And yeah. you did the uh, the big spin for the lottery. You did yeah, for that the lottery, for right. For a long right. time you did that. And I you... want to tell you, working for the state is such a wonderful pleasure. Did the state pay or did you have to wait to get paid? No, they they paid, but they were very strange. I had to... Uh, really? Yeah, I, I had a contract. This was the contract. state of California, right? State of California? Yeah, Sacramento. Sacramento. I had a contract, and they paid for my uh, my flights back and forth. So Wait a minute. So you just have to fly to Sacramento to do this show? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. And I, at the time, I was living in Palm Springs. So That's a tough flight. I got a call from uh, somebody in the state, and she, and she said, uh, you're, you're charging us to fly for more than it costs. I said, no, I'm not. She said, Los Angeles and Sacramento is X amount of dollars. You're charging us more. I said, I don't live in Los Angeles. I live in Palm Springs. And she said, well, I want to see your contract. Send it to me. I said, not a chance. You want to see it? You go talk to somebody next door to you. Yeah. So yeah. That has a copy of the contract, right? Yeah. So you would fly from Palm Springs, yeah. California, to Sacramento. That's a little more expensive flight because it's not your, yeah, that's right. your main airport, right? Yeah. And so you did this for how many years? I think nine. No wonder the state of California is broke. We were paying for your airfare. <laughs> that's right. See? You know, we stayed in a hotel room, my wife and I, Thank for you. nine years at Thank the you, same everybody. hotel. They're applauding me. You know, that's, oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Go ahead. I have to turn my mic yeah, up. I have my ears up. That's right. And so they were paying for to stay in a hotel, right? Yeah. And we stayed in the same room every weekend for nine years. I wow. took out their light bulbs and put in 150-watt light bulbs. I changed the shower head so more water would come out. It was no, like wait, I lived wait. there. Let's back up a second because I've always dreamed of doing this. You're saying when they put those restrictive flow devices, because yeah. then travel news writing as well, You do you bring a pipe wrench with you and take the, the uh, head off, and how do you do it? I, I took the head off and put a new one on and left it there. Oh, so you put a different head on yeah. it. That's good. That's Because you can't take the other one apart. It's got the restrictor in there, right? Yeah, right, right. Oh, this is great. So you had a great shower, and you would ask for the same room every week? Uh, yeah, and it was it was reserved for me every week they loved it so it was uh you would go up there on a friday is that right and then the taping was on a saturday night right yep. so you'd stay there friday saturday night come back sunday no i'd, I'd fly back after the taping oh right away on saturday yeah, right away so you're only there one night yeah only there one night and the interesting thing to me was that every hotel gives you a bar of soap right and they had nice they do yeah they yeah oh you don't those, know i thought those were mints oh you're <laughs> You're in Motel no 595. My mouth felt right? So clean. Okay, yes, go ahead. But so, at a bar, so, and if you took it, they put another one there. Right. I had maybe 50 pounds of soap when I so finally quit the lottery. So, you used to lottery. take the soap home with you? Oh, yeah. And do you ever use that, Jeff, when you take the soap from the hotel? Yeah, sure. Because I've done it, and then I, years later, I look and I go, what are all these little tiny soaps? Now, as a kid, I used to like those, but you would use those soaps? 
You know, they've yeah. gotten real cheap with them now sometimes at these hotels. They're very thin. Oh, yeah, they're very and thin. And they're designed and they, for, like, one use. They have some name on it, like wheat germ or something. <laughs> wheat germ soap. It'll clean you yeah. and don't mope. That's it. And they uh, did you do the shampoos as well and the conditioners? You take those? I don't take those. No. You don't? Why? Uh, well, because I have a lot of that at home. So your soap, then, is applied the from— The soap is it. You soap from the hotel, but you don't do the shampoo or the conditioners? No, no. no? How about the cream, the hand creams? You take that with you? Uh, every once in a while, I do. It's a yeah. very different Fred Dreyer program today. We're getting some travel tips from uh, Jeff Edwards, who not only is a uh, true travel expert, but he has hosted many uh, game shows. He is a radio personality extraordinaire in the Hall of Fame. This man has been at uh, radio stations like KMPC, KFI, and I was talking about you. Really? The other day, to a CNN radio correspondent, one James Roop, huh. who has been entrusted with on the 50th anniversary of the assassination of John F. Kennedy. Yes, yes. He wants to do something different and maybe fly in weeks before into Dallas and see what's going on. I said, the guy you got to talk to is you, Jeff yeah, Edwards. I was because there. Because you were working. Now, let me see if I get this story straight. I want you to tell it here, but I'm going to start it. You had been working at one station and were waiting to start at another. Where were you from when to when? What was that? Well, going? I was down in San Diego. I had been working for KFMB. In uh, San Diego. I'm, and then you were I left go to with KHJ another guy. To, in Los Angeles, right? Yeah. And, but yeah. it wasn't going to start right away, so you the were just waiting. The day I was to start, uh, or rather to get there, I was packing, and I heard the news about uh, President Kennedy. Got an airplane reservation to go to Dallas, landed in Dallas. Walked into the police station, never showed identification. Didn't even know who you were. You just walked right in. Yeah, had no idea. And and I went th there for uh, all three days. Uh, got got a couple of scoops out on Mutual. Didn't you close yourself in the uh, the police chief's office and <laughs> feed a report at one point? Yeah, I was the captain of information. <laughs> The captain and, of information. And the people want to know what are the, what letters are coming in. What te what are people saying? Uh, now it would be on the Internet, of course, right. but then there yeah, wasn't. There was no Internet then. They yeah. came in with telegrams and things. So uh, I went in there and locked the door and called Mutual and read some of them. And he comes and goes, I said, oh, just a minute. I'm on the air. So you were reading the pre the uh, telegrams and yeah. things to the guys at Mutual Radio News, right. which was a radio network at the time, yeah. and giving them scoops. And then when Jack Ruby went and, and shot Lee Harvey Oswald, you were right there. Like It was like how many feet apart? When I you, was probably 10 feet away. 10 feet away. Yeah. Yep. Loud blast you heard, and then you saw you. Was it like, un, like a so, surreal kind of thing? It was, absolutely. But... Uh, I got directly to a payphone and 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 had probably had the scoop on it on radio. On AP, you actually yeah. got the only payphone and got the scoop out. Yeah, right. And meanwhile, one of the uh, great broadcasters and journalists, Cleet Roberts, was going to go to work <laughs> at Channel Nine News, same company owned the yeah. radio station. You're going. Cleet, he was in Washington and missed this whole thing, didn't Cleet, he? Cleet was the best newsman this city's ever seen. Why he do you was, say that? Well, because he was. He's just a great he was, guy. I think so. And too. you know something? When I got uh, fired from KHJ. Uh, for strange reasons, uh, he gave me an office. Just gave it to me. Cleet did? Yeah. Oh, we got to find out more about this. Straight ahead, Jeff Edwards in for Fred Dreyer. It's the PM Show Weekend Edition without Fred Dreyer. I'm Michael Horn on CRN. Try Fry Vineyards, the Mendocino County organic wine with no sulfites added from America's pioneering organic winery, Fry Wine, the first maker of certified biodynamic wines in the United States. At Fry Wines, our emphasis is on producing organic wine of the highest quality while caring for our planet and palate alike. Check out our website at frywine.com. Enjoy the Fry Vineyards Wine Club. You'll receive 20% off all orders and much more. Plus, you can check out our internet-only specials. And go to our crntalk.com website or the frywine.com website and check out Chef Piero's Recipe of the Week. Great biodynamic wines from Redwood Valley in Mendocino County, California. Fry Wines. Go to frywine.com. That's F-R-E-Y-W-I-N-E. -E, frywine.com. Check it out and enjoy great wines at your home tonight. Because Jan switched to GEICO and saved hundreds of dollars on car insurance, her savings account wants to take her to a fireworks show. But it can't. It's a savings account. It can't read where the next fireworks show is in the local paper. Switch to GEICO, and every time you see extra money, you'll know your savings account wants to take you to a fireworks show. 
But remember, it can't. It doesn't know how to read. It is, however, happy that you're saving money. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Homeowners in today's world, no neighborhood is immune from burglaries. So call Protect Your Home, your authorized ADT dealer, and get a free security system with free activation and free hardware. You pay just a $99 installation fee and monitoring services. Call right now. You'll also get six door and window sensors for free. Call right now. 1-866-669-8954. That's 866-669-8954. $99 installation charge, 36-month monitoring agreement at $36.99 a month. For new homeowner customers with satisfactory credit history only, certain restrictions may apply and it cannot be combined with any other offer. The total package includes six door and window sensors. Get a free home security system with free activation and free hardware. Call now, 866 866- 669-8954. That's toll free 866-669-8954. Chuck Wilder here, host of the original talk back. Noon to 2 p.m. Pacific Daylight Savings Time, 3 to 5, out there on the East Coast. You know, we cover everything you need to know to keep up with what they don't want you to know. Talk back, CRN, Digital Talk. Noon to 2, Pacific Daylight Savings Time. It's the PM Show Weekend Edition on CRN Digital Talk Radio with uh, Fred Dreyer. Fred is away today filming an episode of Chicago Fire, the Dick Wolf series on NBC. I don't know what his role is, but he's uh, got a, a role now in that series. He's in Chicago. That's where they shoot the program. And uh, flew out today, I guess, or yesterday, and he's uh, under the cameras today. Obviously, he didn't take me with him. I'm stuck here hosting the show. And we thought, who can we get? And we decided to get... Uh, Fred Dreyer's brother, and of course uh, Jeff Edwards showed up instead, and we're very yeah. Happy well, about you know, I I thought I was his brother, but then I did some You're DNA, not. and it turns out I'm your father. That's thank you very much, <laughs> Dad. Welcome. So so Jeff, so this whole Kennedy thing, which is fifty, uh, this uh, November twenty second, yeah. will be fifty years ago that this happened, the fiftieth anniversary of this tragedy, and uh, and let's talk that you said uh, Cleet Roberts flew, he was the L.A. newsman to Washington with the change. Yeah, of I power. met at, actually from San Diego to L.A. Uh, I, I had to make a connection there, and Cleet was there, and he said, "I'm going to Washington, and that's where it's all going to happen." Well, <laughs> it, it all you went happened to Dallas, in Dallas, and that's yeah. where it all happened. So yeah. you went to Dallas right. and fed the world the, the story. And so when you were out of work, then Cleet actually gave you an office. Yeah, and it, it was an office next to his, and a desk and everything. He said, "Use it as, until you get a job." And did you? You went there every day? Yeah, every day, and I got a job later. It was just really, really good stuff, man. That he did that. I did that with uh, Tomas, our line producer, and. Uh, Tomas has been using the office here for the last 30 years. Yeah, yeah, and I haven't he seen one line come out of him. It's right, and he still <laughs> hasn't gotten a job, but it's all right. I just, I just got that. You can continue using that, Tomas, and look busy in there. It's good. <laughs> all right, what's, uh, boy, tragedy in the news in Boston and new uh, things upcoming. Let's try to get to the lighter side if we can. There's an Al Capone war that uh-huh. has been uh, apparently brewing, Jeff, over a gangster reality show. There's a man who claims to be Al Capone's grandson, and he wants, you know, that Reels channel that they have on cable, R-E-E-L-Z, Reels channel. Yeah. They have this uh, reality show called The Capones. And uh, he, um, he is telling them that uh, he's just a little upset. He, said, uh, t- he told TMZ, there's no way anyone in the cast carries the gangster's DNA. Hmm. And uh, this guy's name is Chris K. Capone. He says, if the network doesn't pull the show, his legal goons... Are prepared to go to war. Now, I don't know what oh, that means. No, oh, my. Right? Yeah. Let me tell you something. Al would be rolling over in his grave, and right now he'd be rolling over if he knew something like this were actually on the air on TV. Wow. That's what, it, that's yeah. what Chris well, I think we got a sound bite from Chris K. Capone. Well, you know, it, 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 Al would be rolling over in his grave if anybody could find it. <laughs> that's true. 
Thank you, Jeff. Okay, there's one for you. Now you're on the board. Thank you. Okay, you going to go for another one or take your cash and go home? All right, let's go for another one. All right, he hired uh, this guy, Chris K. Capone, hired a, a genealogist who couldn't find any direct relation between uh, the show star Dominic Capone and Al Capone. So uh, Reels Channel, those that are sticking to their story, they claim that uh, Dominic Capone is a bona fide descendant and that his great-great-grandfather was Al's uncle, although they're not offering any proof, <laughs> anything. So uh, anyway, by the way, Chris K. Capone, yeah. he never has offered any proof that he's Al's grandson either. But, so. You know, I have, a, I have one news item that Please. has been in my mind Please. and it's driving me nuts. You may remember a couple of weeks ago, uh, there was a prime minister from England, I think, maybe not a prime minister, some big guy, and he went to Mali. And, you know, whenever somebody like that goes to a country, you get a, a, a gift. I, th I think Obama gave uh, uh, the, the British guy a, an A-track player or something. <laughs> right. But an A-track player. That's very good. Thank you. They gave this guy a, a, a camel. A camel? Yeah. He said, here, here not the cigarette, but the, the, a camel. And he said, well, thank you very much, and whenever I come here, I'm going to use it for transportation. Okay. So now he leaves, and the natives in Mali ate the camel. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, they did. Somebody ate the guy's gift, the natives? They, do they do that sort of thing? They Apparently they did. And the wild thing, it was Wednesday. It just he, happened this week? That was hump week? day. But it did happen last week. Thank you very much. It was Wednesday. It yeah. did. It's a true story. It did happen. Hmm? It did happen last yes, week? Okay, yes, did yes, happen. Okay, good. A lot of people will remember that. That's right. Now, uh, I'm a little upset with the United States because I understand President Barack Obama has got his hands full here with this, uh, uh, this situation in uh, Boston that's going on right now. And yeah. these, uh, these people, these terrorists and this terrorist action. But we could have sent John Kerry to Margaret Thatcher's funeral, and we didn't. What's that all about? I'm I don't know. About I don't that. know why nobody. That is a slam to our buddies, the English. And I, I can't believe that the Obama administration, well, yes, I can. They are stupid. That is I, the dumbest thing I've heard. Me too. And and nobody, uh, Clinton isn't going, Bush isn't nobody going. Nobody went. Nobody from this country is going to that funeral. And she was probably one of the greatest statesmen in the world. Michael Reagan. I should have called him. I would have gone with Michael Reagan. That is really ridiculous. I'm very embarrassed yep. uh, to say that America did not send somebody over after Margaret Thatcher backed us 100% during the presidency of, uh, of Ronald Reagan. It's, 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 it's just a scam. That's politics all the time with Obama. What a joke. Do you have really pure water? Maybe not if you're drinking bottled water. Bottled water has some dirty little secrets. Plastic bottles come from oil products. The five-gallon polycarbonate jugs contain bisphenol A, a synthetic estrogen that has raised health concerns. Bottled water dispensers quickly develop algae and bacteria and should be sanitized regularly. Have you ever cleaned your water dispenser? Are you drinking water containing algae and bacteria and synthetic estrogen? Now the good news. Pure Water Science can replace that dirty, outdated bottled water cooler with a high-tech water purification system. The Pure Water Science System features a stainless steel tank that constantly monitors water quality to guarantee your water is pure. It alerts you when service or filter changes are needed. Multi-stage purification removes organic and inorganic contaminants, and the patented self-sanitizing feature eliminates algae and bacteria while adding oxygen to your water. It costs less than bottled water without the bottled water hassle. No more bottles to lift. Just sanitize delicious water, hot or cold, from Pure Water Science. Call 818-502-4191. 818 818- 8-502-4191. Hi, I'm Joan London, and if you're worried about your parent or a loved one living alone like I was, and you want reliable senior care information, then call A Place for Mom, the nation's largest senior living referral service. You'll get free information on assisted living, Alzheimer's care, nursing homes, even important financial information. They had obviously researched every place, not just given me names. Really? Yeah. They found me a place for what she could afford, and it was magnificent. We're now very confident that she's safe, and they just helped every step of the way, and I can't thank them enough. So if you're struggling to find reliable senior living information, call a place for mom. This is a free service, and you can trust them to help you. If you're struggling to find reliable senior living information for your mom or dad, then call or go online to get the free help you need during this turbulent time. Call now, 800-704-6182, 800-704-6182. 
CRN Digital Talk is celebrating 30 years on the air. And to commemorate, we're publishing our quarterly online magazine, complete with lifestyle articles, recipes, and travel tips from network hosts like Dr. Parthenia Grant, Carell, and Michael Horn. To find out how to sign up and get your own copy of the magazine, visit our website at crntalk.com or our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash crntalk. All right, Flo, so the key to safe pest removal is staying calm. Okay. Says here this lady's got a badger in her attic. Oh, I love badgers. Oh, sorry, calm. There he is! Come here, little buddy. I thought he wanted a hug. Badgers don't really hug. Not yet. Oh, badger. Insuring your business vehicles with Progressive is like having Flo on the road with you. Low down payments, great discounts, and flexible billing options. Now that's Progressive. Visit Progressive.com today. United Financial Casualty Company and Affiliates. Someday, I'll drive to the airport, pick a flight, and just take off. Someday, I'll have my own vineyard. Someday, I'll make it past the finish line of a marathon. Someday, I'll drive my very own Mercedes-Benz. Someday is today. With our certified pre-owned sales event going on right now, you can own the car of your dreams. And thanks to exceptional 1.99% financing on select models, now through April 30th, that dream is more attainable than ever. Each of our certified pre-owned vehicles undergoes an exhaustive process of analysis, inspection, and reconditioning until it meets the uncompromising standards of a Mercedes-Benz. Plus, every one is available with an optional extended limited warranty for up to seven years or 135,000 total vehicle miles. And now, with three months of Sirius XM satellite radio. Someday, I'll stop saying someday. Hurry into the Mercedes-Benz pre-owned sales event. Only at your authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer. Visit today for exceptional financing. It's the PM Show Weekend Edition with the one and only Fred Dreyer, except Fred is not here today. He is on assignment. He'll be back next week. He is filming an episode of Dick Wolf's Chicago Fire that you see Thursday nights on uh, NBC across the country, and uh, he'll be telling us all about it next week. I'm Michael Horn, and uh, with me, uh, Hall of Fame uh, radio broadcaster, <laughs> musician, Dixieland uh, drummer, and uh, TV star, who not only uh, did so many uh, quiz shows and uh, contest shows, you were also in many uh, sitcoms, too. I know one comes to mind, Petticoat Junction. Petticoat Junction, yeah, I did that. And uh, I did a movie with Paul Newman. He and I had a face-to-face, just like you and I are right now. He was talking on the mic, and I was engineering, doing that stuff. Uh, it turns out that it was the worst movie that he ever made. And it was? Yes. What and was the movie? It was the WUSA. He doesn't even list it on his credits. W, I got to see this one. You think it's available somewhere? WUSA. Yeah, yeah. And you were the engineer? You were like the Tomas character? Yeah, right. And and I was telling him they want to talk to him upstairs and things like that. It hey, was, Tomas, they want to talk to you upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that was like, that was fun. And, and Newman... Uh, you know, he wouldn't sign autographs. He, was, he didn't want to do that with anybody. And he told me that acting is like running a 100-yard dash one foot at a time. Really? Yeah, and I can see that because, you know, you get, a, you get up, you get a shot, dual shot, then a, then then a head shot, and this shot. They keep shooting the same scene from different angles, Yeah, right? yeah. Amazing. He was, he was a, a wonderful guy. I really he liked was, him. Well, Paul Newman, one of the greats, as yeah. are you, my friend. Thank you for being with us. Garth Brooks is in the news. He is being sued. Uh, apparently, uh, Lisa Sanderson, who worked with Garth for 20 years, claims in her uh, lawsuit that although uh, uh, Garth Brooks passes himself out as humble and a highly principled everyman, he's actually a paranoid, angry, deceitful, and invict- vindictive man huh. who will turn against those closest to him on a dime. I can't believe oh, this. Man. First this, of all, who is that, Garth Brooks? This is uh, Lisa. He's the country singer, the famed Garth Brooks. Oh, oh Brooks, yeah, you know, yeah, Friends yeah. of all yeah. places, shameless, all those. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Lisa Sanderson alleges she was a successful TV producer whom Garth Brooks lured to jumpstart his TV and movie career, but she claims that Garth was his own worst enemy, killing deals with Disney, Fox, and others by making ridiculous demands. And Lisa Sanderson says Garth torpedoed a bunch of great opportunities because of uh, his unbridled uh, demands. As for her, she says uh, Brooks kind of screwed her over in the salary, bonus, and profits department. But not in the body department. No, no, no. Allegedly uh, lying to her about the uh, pot of gold she'd get if she stuck around. 
She uh, <laughs> filed this lawsuit and wants uh, $425,000 in unpaid bonus and salary as well as punitive damages. Oh, man. And uh, she also says Garth is a tax fraud. Wow. Wow, that's pretty rude. Boy, I'm telling you. Anyway, there's a spokesperson now for Red Stokes Entertainment. They issued a statement on behalf of uh, Garth Brooks and said, Mr. Brooks, of course, denies everything in the lawsuit filed today by Lisa Sanderson. Uh, Mr. Brooks and Red Stokes Entertainment will continue to take the necessary steps toward resolving this matter through the legal system. So there you go. They're not going to put up with it. Mm. Stephen King, he's got a knack for terror, and uh, apparently this is a tough week to do this. His TV adaptation of a fictitious gunfight apparently set some uh, terrified young students scrambling for cover. CBS is calling a lights, camera, action on Under the Dome. It's a sci-fi horror show based on Stephen King's novel about a town that gets trapped under an invisible force field. And the script apparently called for a... A gunfight with all the sights and sounds. The problem is, it was a midday Tuesday shoot. It was filmed in a park a few hundred yards from (laughs) an elementary school in Wilmington, North Carolina. It sent everyone there into a blind panic. Students on the playground after lunch got the worst of it, hot-footed inside the building because it seemed very real. Yeah. You know what? That that reminds me of something, and, and it's not anything to do with Stephen King. But it reminds me of a moment from my deep, 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 deep past. What's that? Junior high school. Spring was coming to New Jersey, and right. spring days in New Jersey are so beautiful. Are you a New Jersey native? Yeah, oh. yeah. So I'm sitting next to the window in a very boring class, and it's spring, and the window's open, and I just jumped out. And Wait, wait a minute. You jumped out the window? Yeah, I was on the first floor, and no problem, but I jumped out the window because I was going to boogie and, and go, go someplace. Yeah, because it was springtime. Yeah, and then... I realized after I hit the ground and I was lying down so nobody would see me stand up that it was about a half a mile of green grass. And <laughs> if I started to go, they'd see you. They'd see me. So I had to lie there for about a half an hour until school was over. Well, this is a <laughs> sad story. I know. So you jumped out the window. Yeah, that's right. And nobody noticed you were missing. No. But if you took off, couldn't the, you have gone to one side of the building, or somebody would have seen you from another building? Yeah, they would. In any place I went, even the other side, it, it, it's, there was plenty of uh, place to see. Could Why you, I didn't figure that out when I jumped, I don't know. Wow, what an interesting childhood you had! <laughs> yes, it's, 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 it, it gets more interesting when I when I grow up. <laughs> These great stories of Jeff Edwards. <laughs> hey, there was a, a call for a Friends reunion. You know the TV show Friends? Yeah. And it's gonna, it's not gonna happen. The co-creator uh, has answered questions about the rumors of an upcoming Friends season, and she explained uh, that uh, she's going to clear this up. It's not happening. Friends was about, you know, when you, you had your friends, your family, and all that stuff. When you had a family, there's no need anymore. She shot down the rumors of a movie reunion. Ah, well, not going to happen. No. So, Boy, is that disappointing. I is. hope I can sleep tonight. I hope you can. <laughs> I hope you can. Really, uh, you know. The uh, Boston Marathon tragedy, Mark Wahlberg, uh, Wahlberg, everybody reacting to this. He wanted to, he's one of the most famous celebrities to come from Boston. And so uh, he wanted to rush home and be with his kids after this whole thing started. It's a a normal thing. He was on Jimmy Kimmel promoting his new movie, Pain and Gain. And he said, uh, quoting now, I just wanted to rush home today, hug my kids. And you know, it's a crazy world that we're living in. It's horrible. I just ask everyone to please pray for all the people in Boston and their families, especially the Richards family. That's the one where the little eight-year-old victim martin richards was the first to I, I have to ask you a question That's about sad. that and yeah. i you know i think it's horrible what happened right but why are they putting martin richards picture on the front page day after day like what's the point of that what is tell me what so the we point i is. guess remember it i mean I say, first off this innocent kid that just happened to be there having a good time and yeah, his life is snuffed out he told it's, us about it then why are you putting his picture there what yeah. you know it's not it's news tough. it's tough how you handle it and i you know i'm a little i'm sorry i don't want to be bagging here on the uh on the current administration the president but i think the president should be there he should have been there already you know a day ago just settle things down when 9-11 happened uh you know george w bush was on tv all the time and trying to calm everybody down and there's no news coming out of there which i don't mind i think it's good that the authorities are waiting to show pictures or whatever i don't need to know everything well he's gonna he's gonna be there tomorrow at the, it's, about it's taking time. him so long as he's running yeah, exactly i think that's what it is he was no running to get there <laughs> he was dancing at the white house just the other night at some kind of an event oh, wasn't yeah, he? yeah it was sad it was unbelievable We'll continue straight ahead, the PM Show Weekend Edition without Fred Dreyer. Hi, folks. This is Fred Dreyer for Regenix. 
Like so many people today, I was losing my hair. I was literally watching it fall out, jumping right off the top of my head. So I said, that's it, enough. I called Regenix. I still remember that first day I walked through those doors. It was magical. It changed my life. When they introduced me to their patented hair analysis program, I immediately saw why I was losing my hair. Through their microscopic examination, I saw gray, sickly scalp. I had no circulation. The hair follicles themselves were caked and clogged with a dirty, oily sludge. I was so relieved. Finally, there was hope. So now, after six years on the Regenix program, my scalp is pink and clean and my hair is growing back. It makes so much sense. Don't wait. Call Regenix right now. Pick up the phone and put an end to your worries. Start by calling 1 800 Regenix. That's 1 800 R E G E N I X or go to Regenix.com. SwissAmerica.com reports precious metal prices rebounded Tuesday following a two day speculative sell off. Gold last traded at 1368 an ounce, silver 2339. CNBC's Jim Cramer says gold is owned by different kinds of investors. ETFs were driving gold, and that's the tail. I didn't like that, he says. They like to buy high. They like the momentum. When the momentum reverses, though, they don't like it, and they get out. Gold coins are the place to be, says Jim. Craig Smith reports he's proud of Swiss America clients who ran to the phone to place buy orders rather than listening to the media pundits advising them to run for the exits and sell. He says it warms his heart to see wisdom in action. Jim Carrillo, senior analyst and broker at Swiss America, asks, is the bull market over? He says what's being offered right now is a huge discount on wealth insurance. Read more about it at SwissAmerica.com. Get your copy of The Simple Truth, 800-630-2167. 800-630-2167. PM Show, weekend edition with Fred Dreyer on CRN Digital Talk Radio. Fred is away. He's shooting an episode of Chicago Fire in Chicago. That's where they actually do the show on NBC, Dick Wolf's uh, newest series. I love the program. I think it's great, and I'm glad Fred's on it. He'll tell us all about it next week when he returns to the broadcast. In the meantime, yours truly, Michael Horn, here with you, along with Jeff Edwards. Good to be back with you, Jeff. Love working with you. With you, man, if this would be considered work. Yeah, yeah it's tough not, working yeah. with me. I know that is. You know what? what is really, uh, it's upset me for a long time. What's that? It's... Anonymous sources say that blah, 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 blah happened. Right. Anonymous sources not allowed to comment have commented. Let's see who the sources are. I want to know who they are, right? That's right. In the if old days, no source, you had to have two sources to a story or it wasn't a story. Now it's whatever. Yeah, absolutely right. And by the way, coming up, Barry Farber is going to have more news on the uh, uh, Boston uh, terrorist attack, and he'll have uh, new details for you, I believe. So stay tuned for that. He's got a great guest coming your way. Now, the Fashion Police, the uh, writers are officially the on fashion strike. Fashion Police? Yeah, E! Entertainment Television show Fashion Police, you know, with uh, Joan Rivers. Yeah. They are suing, uh, they're attempting to try to get, actually, uh, hundreds of dollars worth of unpaid overtime they claim is owed to them by the network. And uh, they've decided to go on strike until they get paid. Uh, Vin Diesel, The Rock, uh, and Paul Walker have gotten the green light for uh, Fast and Furious 7. Can you believe there's been seven, will be seven of these movies? Wow. Uh, boy, this is something else. It gets more miles per gallon with this than a Prius, let me tell you. Uh, they're <laughs> running on fumes. Uh, the uh, Fast and Furious uh, 6 at Universal announced a seventh picture already in the works. And uh, they're going to have their roles back again, and so we'll have you more. They're saying that uh, uh, you might uh, want to watch Fast and Furious 6 on May 24th first, because that's going to come out first, just so you're not confused. So in I other saw, words, I 6 saw, is not out yet, and they're already doing 7. No, right, right. I saw something in Star Magazine. Well, I didn't see it on that. I saw it on this piece of paper in front of me. Uh, yes, the 20 good. most hated celebrities in Hollywood. Yeah, tell me about this. Gwyneth Paltrow is the top of everyone's Can you believe list. that? No. I can't believe. Gwyneth Paltrow seems like a really wonderful person. The Star Magazine calculated the 20 most hated celebrities in Hollywood. Yeah. And Gwyneth Paltrow, you're as stunned as I am that she's on the top of the list. And, and next is Kristen Stewart. After that, Jennifer Lopez. What? what, what, what how do they I compile like these this? these people. How can they hate somebody? Now, number 20 is Chris Brown. I kind of get that. Okay. Jesse James, you know, he screwed over with his wife and all that stuff. I think that's, yeah. you know, same thing there. Sandra Bullock. And then uh, Taylor Swift. I can't believe that. Taylor Swift seems like a nice person. 
Uh, Shia LaBeouf, number 17. Lindsay well, Lohan, 16. Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. I saw him when he first started out in a, in a, a, a kind of a movie that they were doing. And he, now talk about a guy who's probably not that nice a guy. You think? Yeah, yeah. So I just move him up to number four. Okay, so you move him up. Lindsay Lohan is 16. Angelina Jolie is 15. Jay Leno is 14. How can you hate somebody like I that? I don't know. This is a crazy thing. Ashton Kutcher is 13. Leanne Rimes, 12. 10 and 11, Chris Jenner and Kim Kardashian. I understand that. Yeah, me too. And Hathaway, <laughs> 9. Justin Bieber, I get at 8. Madonna, I get at 7. Matt Lauer, I don't know why he'd be six. Catherine Heigl, she's kind of got a little uh, ego there. Five. John Mayer, four. Jennifer Lopez, as you mentioned, three. Kristen Stewart, two. And Gwyneth Paltrow, one. I just don't get that, Jeff Edwards. No, I don't either at all. Hey, but what I don't get about anybody is Justin Bieber. You know, the second he gets hair on his chest, he's finished. You think so? Oh, yeah. There's one for you there. Yeah. Hey, Robert Downey Jr. is talking about leaving Iron Man. Now, this uh, come on. This is the he's, uh, with that Avengers star. He's thinking about retiring from the role of Iron Man. It's Tony Stark, mm. you know. Mm. It's uh, it's Tony Stark's family demons that made him realize. He says, and I'm quoting him now, he says, it got me thinking about how big the message from your cosmic sponsor needs to be before you pick it up. How many genre movies can I do? How many uh, follow-ups to a successful follow-up are actually fun? I come from a family of very innovative writers and directors and actors and artists, and the circle of friends they were in were the people I, I heard having pun-offs playing poker at two in the morning, and it was just the most comforting aspect of my childhood. So there's this kind of legacy of souls from what I consider to be a very particular time in entertainment, and I'm sensing a return to that. Don't Come on, everybody loves him in Iron Man. Come yeah, on. But I, I have to go now because I have an Iron Man oh. suit. Back home. No, stay I'm here. I'm going to get please. into it. Do not and I'm leave. taking that role. Do man. not leave, please. Do not oh, leave. Okay. I want you to stay here. Some sad news in the uh, Jane Seymour and her husband, James Keach, announced Friday their 20 year marriage is over. Hmm. It means that uh, Jane Seymour is back on the block, so to speak. Oh. Uh, James Seymour and James Keach uh, confirmed they're separated and have been for several months. That's according to a statement in Us Weekly. And this time they're negotiating the terms of their divorce. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. uh, Radar Online claims that uh, Jane Seymour kicked her hubby out of the house after she suspected. Uh oh, what? What? He, he had been cheating. No! How can that happen? I don't know how that. Jane and. Uh, you know what? I know why she kicked him out of the house. Why is that? He stole her Botox. Jane and uh, James have been having problems for years now, and she's finally had it with his antics. Kicked him out of the house a few weeks ago. And insiders say Jane uh, put up with James was wandering eye for many years, but finally threw in the towel after he had come become close to a woman that she knew. Uh oh, they won't say who, but it's a woman she knew. And define close. Well, that's not. I mean, define it. What does that mean? Just I'm sure. You know, you know. Move, it, 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 they drove next to each other on the freeway. That's close. Something, yeah, they have two kids, John and Christopher, seventeen. But. Uh. She knows that he's been with somebody new. Mm. Also, uh, uh, the Bachelor romance, I think, soon may be over. Sean and Catherine's relationship already in trouble. It's taken a backseat to Sean's new Hollywood life, and insiders are saying that uh, competing on Dancing with the Stars has given Sean a huge ego, and he's become obsessed with fame and money. <laughs> Oh, no. They said he's become a raging diva. He might show up on that Star Magazine's list there. Uh, yeah, maybe, yeah. All right, we'll take a break. Coming up, final segment. Jeff Edwards here as with yours truly, Michael Horn. PM show, weekend edition without Fred Dreyer. Fred is uh, taping uh, Chicago Fire. He'll be back with us next week. How old is the roof on your home? If it's over 15 years old, how much longer will it last before the leaks begin? Think about the damage, then think about this. If it's time for a new roof, call Sears to get your roofing done right. And if you call Sears right now, you'll save $500. Just call 1-888-749-4455. Sears licensed, fully insured contractors install a variety of shingles and styles that are built for long-lasting performance. And you'll save $500 if you call right now. 
So call Sears for a free in-home consultation. That's 888-749-4455. Hurry, this offer ends soon. It's not available in all areas. Installation provided by Sears authorized licensed contractors. License information available upon request. So if you need a new roof, call Sears Roofing. Call right now and save $500. 888-749-4455. That's 1-888-749-4455. Listen, if you're considering buying hardwood flooring, don't do anything until you've written down this number and received your free Lumber Liquidators catalog. The flooring was high quality with an unbeatable price tag. Call in the next 10 minutes to get your free catalog. What I bought at Lumber Liquidators is a vastly higher quality than flooring I had installed six years ago and for a fraction of the cost. So if you want great hardwood flooring at unbeatable prices, trust Lumber Liquidators. We buy direct from the mills. Call right now to get our flooring guide and catalog absolutely free. It's filled with top quality hardwood flooring, including solid hardwoods, laminates, and bamboos, and even Bella Wood prefinished flooring with a 100 year transferable warranty. The same floor Bob Vila has in his home. This free catalog is full of tips, ideas, and our flooring project list to make your buying decisions easy. Hurry, call right now to get a copy of this free guide and catalog. Call 800 542 0122 to get your free copy now. 800 542 0122. 800 5420122 Attention business owners. Did you know that over 50% of people who search for a local business are doing it on their mobile device? If your business doesn't have a website designed for mobile viewing, then you're missing out on a huge amount of new customers. The good news is that ABI Hosting is now giving away a free mobile website with every annual business plan. That's right. Sign up with ABI today and we'll include a mobile version of your website absolutely for free. This doesn't replace your current website. It's an additional version optimized for mobile viewing that you can also edit and further customize. It's loaded with high-tech features, including click-to-map and the popular click-to-call feature, which makes it even easier for mobile users to find you. Is this item in stock? I'd like to make a reservation. To learn more, call now. 1-800-769-0887. That's 1-800-769-0887. Get your free mobile website now. Again, 1-800-769-0887. That's 1-800-769-0887. PM Show Weekend Edition on CRN Digital Talk Radio with Fred Dreyer. Well, without Fred Dreyer today, Fred is shooting the, um, uh, he's in Chicago. Chicago Fire is uh, one of the great shows on NBC. And uh, Fred Dreyer, uh, now a new star, adding to that series. And he'll tell us about it next week. Should be good. good. I'm, I'm happy for him. That's great. Man. Jeff Edwards is in with us. Radio star, TV star, uh, TV series star, quiz show master, musician. <laughs> good and, Lord. Uh, also talk show host here at CR. Why am I working for nothing? With yours truly, Michael Horn. Because that's the same salary I get. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Brandy Grant, uh, Glanville, is, uh, she's in The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. She's decided to leave her current home. Home after she was hit with a rent hike and then had fans turn up at her place. Now she's got less than a month to move out. She's struggling to find a new pad. You got some room at your place? Uh, yeah, we have an extra bedroom. Brandy could be that Debbie you were looking yeah, for. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, I, I'm, I have to go to bed now, honey, but first I'm going to have a brandy. <laughs> You work them in any way you can, don't you? That's yeah. good, Jeff. That's good. Uh, the offices, uh, the stars, uh, John Krasinski and, uh, and and Jenna Fisher are celebrating the end of that series on NBC. They're going to take a trip to a Scranton, Pennsylvania, home of the fictional Dunder Mifflin office, and they'll uh, <laughs> uh, the cast agree they're going to visit the city on May 4th. I love it. That's great. Have you ever watched that show? Yeah, I used to watch it. Uh, I don't for, watch it. Yeah, it was, it was pretty good, I thought. But, it, it, you know, here's what happens with writers and comedies. What's that? You, you get a character, and you, you build around him, and then pretty soon you can't write anymore about that guy. So right. you've got to bring up another character, yeah. another. And then you have to get out of the office. You know, they go to Somewhere. Ireland or yeah. something. yeah And th then the show begins to uh, dissolve. I'm surprised it stayed on this long. And so that's why part of it, when you watch it, is like it, on the edges of it, it's dissolving. Yeah. yeah. You're right. It does. It, I, I agree with you. You've got to keep it fresh. Good writing and then good acting. 
Uh, okay, some of the runners did not get to finish the Boston Marathon on Monday due to the uh, yeah. you know, terrorist explosion there. And so students from Boston College have put together the Boston Marathon, the last five, for everyone who wants to complete the race that was stopped by the bombs. Ugh. The last five marathon is scheduled for this Friday at 4.30 p.m. I can't believe this. And they're inviting anyone who was affected by the bombing to take part in a five-mile walk from Boston College Ugh. to Copley Square. Won't that in, 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 get this, involved with the, the investigation you know, what and happens with, with these things is... Uh, relevance goes away and emotion comes in and everyone's trying to do something related to it which and and they don't have any any point these event organizers are saying for anyone who did not get to finish for anyone who was injured for anyone who lost their life we will walk we will walk to show that we decide when our marathon ends 